Hi, this is Madeline from Sonic Bloom. This time we're going to look at how to achieve what is often called hocketing or hocket. This is a technique where a melody or chords are played alternately by different sounds. Say you have a MIDI clip and you want different synths to play parts of it, as this creates an interesting effect that is used in various electronic genres. The name hocket comes from the French word hoquet, which means shock, sudden interruption, hitch or hiccup. It originated in vocal and choral music of the 13th and early 14th centuries. In the medieval practice of hocketing, a single melody is divided between two or occasionally more voices, so that one voice alternates with the other. But this technique is not unique to Western European music. It can be found under different names in many African cultures, in Indonesian gamelan music, in Indian Sikkim music, and in Eastern European folklore. Another lesser known term for the division of a musical line or melody between several instruments is Klangfarbenmelodie. It's a term coined by the Austrian composer and music theorist Arnold Schoenberg, and the German word literally translates as sound color melody, which I think is really nice, as it adds color or timbre and texture to the melodic line. And this is what we're trying to achieve. If you're coming from Bitwig, you might recognize this as something that can be achieved with the instrument selector. I'm going to show you how to do this in Ableton Live in any edition as well, either manually or automatically. And while we're at it, we'll apply the same technique to MIDI and audio effects. So let's have a look how we can achieve this technique in Ableton Live. And I've already pre-selected fourth synth key presets that I want to use and I'm going to drag the first one here into a MIDI track that is empty. Select it, do Command G or Control G on Windows to group it into an instrument track. Then we're going to unfold the chains and simply drag the other ones in one by one. And I'm going to turn everything but the first one off so we can check the volume. So that so let's say we're gonna turn this up by point eight, this down by minus five point five. Let's try the next one. Gotta do this again. Do the same here as well. And the last one. Okay, that should roughly be the same. If you want to do this properly, you know, take your time. And next up, we're going to go and click on chain here. Then we're going to move each one step further so they're all on their own little lane and then we can simply macro map this to macro one. Okay the next step is turning the chains all back on again and then we're going to go into the macro mapping mode and set the maximum here for at three because we only have four chains so from zero to three out of the mode again and then we're gonna double click create a MIDI clip and since scale is already selected I can just go down a bit and go into draw mode with B and I'm gonna start at say C3 and we're gonna maybe switch out a few here as well again so they're not doubled. We could play this now. And so currently the first chain is active and playing. So I could either move manually through. Another way is to 
use expression control. So we can find this, I think, under the modulators now. Yep. And it does look a bit different to Life 11. Okay, so this is how expression control looks in Life 11, if you haven't used it before. Quite a different interface, so it's got a complete overhaul for Life 12. But the most important things are we got the MIDI ins, so the selections. So you can either choose these here, or you can be lazy like me and simply take the ones that you need. So incremental, increment in Life 12, and you've got random here. And then you simply have to map this, and this is pretty much what you've been using for this tutorial at least. Okay, and we can use different things. So we can either choose increment, incremental in life 11 as a source, and then we can just simply map this to the chain selector. And in this case, I would actually not have this modulate the chain selector by automate again, as it used to be the case in life 11 only. So there was no modulating. And then we can just simply play this and see how it goes. So that works, simply moves through really quickly. I mean, we could to make sure that, that we can hear that it's really properly changing things. I could also go in and say, times two, so that's a bit slower. And you can see that it's moving through. So this is the option if you just incrementally want to step through. Another option is to use random. So here we've got random already selected. Of course, you can also always go in and just select whatever you want. I'm just lazy and want to be quick with the videos. So we're going to map this here again. We're going to go to remote again as well. And let's see if this works out of the box. So this is the way to do it if you want it more randomly selected and not alternating from one to one. And of course, this approach can also be used for media effects or audio effects. So let's explore that as well. So I'm going to hide this again and hide this to make this a little bit more compact. And, and so for example, what we could do is we could use chord presets different ones that we want to step through. As an example for media facts, I'm actually going to go and turn scale awareness on because this is actually much nicer and I, I don't actually need the scale preset behind it anymore that you would still put behind it in Life 11 and earlier. And then I could just simply select it. I could also use MIDI Learn, but I'm not going to do this right now. So I'm going to set this to two scale degrees. So that's a third, four, and then maybe plus seven, which is an octave. And then group this again with command or control G. And then I can just, in this case, because I wanted the same thing, duplicate it. And then we could make changes, say like, okay, here, we might want a minus seven, and then um, maybe a six to have a seventh. And then in this case here, we're going to add a seventh and a ninth. And then here, we're going to go minus seven again, and just add a ninth. And then we're going to click on chain again, do the same thing again, move them all into their own positions that are not overlapping. Map the chain selector, go in here, set it to three again, 
click on map and then we can hide this again and then since we currently do not have the incremental one mapped anymore we could just select this well that's a bit fast for these chords so i'm actually gonna make this slower again Okay, so here we can see that it's actually not working properly. It is jumping around. Okay, so maybe let's grab the MIDI effect rack and add it behind. And let's see if that works now. Okay, so this is odd, but now it works. So best to always put the expression control first then it seems because if you map it to a media fact rack that is in front of it it doesn't seem to do things the way it's supposed to and of course you could also set it to random and let's do the same exercise with uh, audio effects so i'm gonna select the echo let's see what we've got here let's grab the tipsy Group this again, Command or Control G, go into the chains. Let's see what we clipped, slap analog, maybe. That's making a sound. Let's maybe take this and this. And then we're gonna go into the chains, move them again. Macro map it to the first one. And then we could go in as well and either change this manually or with the MIDI controller we get MIDI or key map this as well of course but I can also go in here and take this first source and set this to say random set it to remote again map this to the chain selector here of the audio fact track go into the macro mapping and set this to 3 now we can go out again and let's see what we get. Okay, so I think we're gonna turn this down a bit. Definitely a case of where you would need to adjust the volume output of the different chains. And a last tip, if you have something like the case that I showed with the echo presets and also with the um, chord presets, you could also macro map the different parameters that you want to chain and then simply use the uh, macro variations and create new variations. So for example, I'm just going to go through, take a shortcut, you could go in and macro map these and then have different settings going from the macros. But just to show you in general how this could work as well is we can have different chains. So I'm going to actually unmap increment. I could set a new variation here and another, and another, and another. And so the, the advantage of if you're using the same device, just in different settings, you wouldn't need different chains and you would only need one device, which particularly in live performance would be really helpful because you're using less CPU. In music production, it doesn't matter as much anymore. So, and now if we go into MIDI mapping here, we can see that we've got the, the down button and then we could simply map that and simply step through this way. And um, so this is another way to get the Hocket or Klangfarben Melody effect in Ableton Live. 
And another tip, if you want to use this trick with the audio effect track, you can't have the expression control on this track because it's a media effect and the track is an audio track. And so what you could use instead is the LFO. So we're going to go to audio effects, grab the LFO. Let's put it in front, map this to the chain selector again and set, set it to remote in this case. You can also have it on modulate if you still want to be able to change the chains manually. And then we can select the waveform, let's say as up. And of course we're going to have to set the rate to something a bit slower. Let's maybe try this. Let's go in solo. And here on the waveform, you also have a random if you want a random option. That's it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.